Okay. Uh, we continue the previous lecture. We were talking about the DCM operation of buck converter. So we are using the buck converter all the time, but all the principles and everything can be applied with minor modification for the other type of converters. That will be discussed later. So don't worry about the dealing only with this buck converter. Okay. So this is a waveform of inductor current in DCM operation of this buck converter. So last time I explained the very reason for having this DCM operation is these two diodes, both of them are unidirectional switch. So this direction of current and this direction of current is not allowed, that means this current, inductor current, should be always positive. As I said previously, this is borderline between CCM and DCM operation. So with R, so for some fixed value R, R critical, we call it R critical in the previous lecture. Then it starts from zero and go to the peak value, return to the zero, and repeat this periodic operation. If you increase R, then this average value will be reduced. So this is a this average value of load current is average value of inductor current. So this is the in, uh, increased. This IL should the, this load current should be smaller than the previous one. Then we should shrink like that. So the only way of doing that without going through this negative current is just deducing the area of this. Because the average of this area is average value of load current and inductor current, right? So for, for, for this, this output is, if D is fixed, output is fixed all the time, but that is the only CCM mode operation. If converter moves in, in the DCM operation, output is proportional not only this D, and, but also this R, okay? So larger R increase R voltage, that means the slope of this on-time period is, this is fixed and this will be increased, but this is smaller than this, so this is positive, and if R is increasing, then this slope becomes more gradual, so this is the case like that. During this DTS on time period, inductor current should be increased because this value is positive. Okay? And this off time slope is minus VO divided by L. If VO is increased, the slope is increasing. This decay slope is increasing. So it decays faster. That means it reaches zero before starting the next operational period. Then the diode turned off. If the diode is turned off, it remains in terms of for the remaining operational time of one switching period. Okay. So this is the requirement for this, this scenario, operational scenario. We will prove this soon. So this is true. Our voltage in DCM is proportional to R. We'll prove that. And this I already explained. And think about the load current. If R is increased, the output will be increased. But this load current is decaying faster than rate of increase. Okay? That means this should be reduced. Okay? This area should be reduced even though our voltage is increased, the load current is further decreased. So the, the because of this R is increased much. So think about this, the average value of this is always the, this load current, then this should move this, this way. Okay? So this is the one justification of this, the circuit waveforms in DCM operation, right? And we discussed this, and this is critical value, critical situation. The converter is on the borderline of CCM and DCM. Condition for that is the average value of this in inductor current is exactly same as 
have the, this ripple component, current ripple component, that makes it start from zero and reach peak and come back to the zero again. If this average value of this inductor current is larger, like this, then converter is in CCM. If this one, this average value is lower than this value, converter is in DCM. So using this borderline condition, this condition, this equation holds. This is IL, average value of inductor current. This is del IL, and half the del IL is the same as this one. For this particular value of the R, which place this converter on the borderline of CCM and the DCM operation, we call it as R critical. So from this equation, we find out this. So if R is larger than R critical, the converter is in DCM operation. And likewise, if L is smaller than this L critical, this is derived from this equation, then we also in this converter is also in the DCM operation. So we use this to understand this condition. Okay. All right. So I have some examples. So this is the waveform, simulate waveform of inductor current for this particular buck converter. So this is a very simple example. And this now, this L is fixed at this value. So L is fixed at this 40 micro Henry, right? And R is changed. R critical is this one. He used this formula to evaluate this. R critical is this one. And we're increasing R. This is when R is smaller than this one. This is CCM, in deep CCM, right? So we increase R this direction. That means the load current is smaller than this borderline one. Average value of this is obviously smaller than this. And we have this area. So this region where the inductor current is zero. Okay. So obviously converter is DCM in this case. CCM, CCM, this is a boundary condition. And similarly, we can change the L. Now R is fixed. R is fixed at one ohm, and we are changing this. Okay. So you have a bunch of curves, inductor current curves. This L critical value using the previous equation, 7.5 micro Henry is the critical one. So this is the borderline between CCM and the DCM. And if L is larger than this one, you are in CCM, and this is in deep CCM. If we decrease the L, uh, I'm sorry, I confused with L and R, okay? So you, but you understand that, okay? This is a smaller L, smaller L, then converter goes in the, D, in the DCM operation. So this is obvious, okay? And also you can change the duty ratio, okay? If you use different duty ratio, because this equation is also related with duty ratio. For the previous example, if duty ratio is 0.5, here duty ratio was one quarter, okay? Then if you use this equation, then R critical is 8 ohm. Okay, and we used this number for this simulation. Okay, so this is the same value, but D is now 0.5, then this R critical becomes 8 ohm. Okay, so it depends on the many parameters. If one parameter is fixed and another parameter is fixed, okay, you can judge the status of the converter operation. CCM or DCM by changing the values of one component, L or digital or the duty ratio. Okay? So some simple analysis in DCM to calculate the 
bulk gain of this converter. This is bulk converter. So if this bulk converter is in CCM operation, we have this DTS and this is uptime sub-circuit and this is not existing. Then converter is in CCM and the voltage gain is simply D. Now we have DCM operation. Okay, so this is the IL waveforms during the CCM, uh, no, no, during on time of DCM operation for this DTS. Okay, so this is TS. TS is here and the on time period is this one. During this period of time, the inductor voltage is always positive. That means this current is increasing for all cases. And the remaining part of this switching period, the, this whole period is 1 minus DTS. And the inductor stop decaying fast, relatively fast. So it decays before the onset of next switching period. So it, it remains zero here like this. This is a DCM operation. So you have a new definition of D1TS. You have previous definition. You have D, D prime. And the new definition is this D1. So D1TS represents the portion of uptime period where the inductor current is existing, right? So this is D1 TS, this is DTS, this is TS, this is 1 minus DTS, okay? Okay, so this is a typical waveforms, and during this period of time, sub-circuit is this one, and during this time period where this inductor current is existing, you have this sub-circuit, and when this IL becomes a zero, there is a diode, was turning on here, so let me use this one. What well, diode turned on? Diode is this one. Now diode is turned off. Okay, so here I A is zero. Okay, it becomes zero and it stays zero. All right, then waveform of this this inductor voltage is. During this period of time, this obviously Vs minus Vo, as shown here. And during this period of time, this inductor voltage is negative of Vo. And during this period of time, this Va is zero. Why, why that is zero? Because IL is zero, it's not that case. This is not IL is zero. This is zero because not IL is zero. But because this IL stays at zero, because VL is L times DIL time derivative of I, IL is VL, all right? So it really doesn't matter whether this, this value is zero, but it stays zero. So this becomes zero. If this, this column is fixed at 2M, for some case, not this one, then still this, this VL is zero because IL is not changing, is, is staying some fixed value, then this voltage becomes zero, okay? So this period VL is zero, not because IL is zero, but because the IL is, remains constant at zero, okay? So this voltage is zero, and then regardless of operational mode of converter, either CCM or DCM, this ball second balance condition should satisfy all the time. Otherwise, this converter won't work, okay? Some bad thing will happen, okay? So area of this one is the same as this one, ball second balance condition is written here, okay? So, but we cannot derive the voltage gain from this equation, this equation is not complete, incomplete, because D1 is unknown. Here, maybe you, you, you know D1, if, if you know everything, but based on this, this simplified sketch, this D1 is unknown. And you cannot control this, 
So this is unknown and uncontrollable variable. What you are controlling is only D. Okay? D, you know D. You have the desired D value, but you, D1 is, is determined by this circuit operation. Operational conditions will determine D1. So this is unknown and uncontrollable variable should be eliminated. So we need to have another equation. So this is based on this. And from this, from this waveforms, you know this IL, IL, average value of this should be say, uh, average value of the inductor current should be same as this R is known. This is output digital, then this value should be this, all right? Then that means this average value of this. Okay, you evaluate area of this and divide that by this period is the average value of this inductor current should be same as the this load current. You have another equation, that is this one, IA is VO, VO divided by R, then this is the this is a triangle, you have one half here, one one divided by two. This is the maximum value of this. But this can be expressed, IL max can be expressed this using this value. I said the if possible, you should use VO, not VS. Okay? VS is always fixed. This is the slope of this period time, T1, Ts, so, and the length. So this is slope and this is time period. So this is the value expression for the IL max. Okay? The area of this is IL max times this is the height of this triangle, and this is the width of this triangle, and you divide everything by Ts to have the average value of this. Then using this and this, you eliminate D1, and you have relations on this, based on this one and two. This is a relationship, and you evaluate this, okay? Then you use this, and you eliminate this, and you reconstruct the D1 that satisfy these two equations simultaneously. Then D1 is this one put here. Then this is the gain formula for the DCM. Very complicated. Okay? There are this is nonlinear and multivariable function, but you don't have to memorize this. Just understand this. The procedure of deriving this is important. And the most important thing is R appears here. If R becomes larger, this denominator, entire denominator becomes small, then this voltage gain will increase. Okay? So this voltage gain is apparently proportional to this load resistance R. Okay? It used this assumption in analyzing the DCM inductor current waveforms. And we justified the dedication by showing this. Okay? I said we prove this, we prove this with this simple circuit analysis. Let me show another simulation example. And this is also a converter. And R is increased to 12 ohm. So with this value, D, and this switching period, we evaluate a critical. This one, 5.33 ohm. This one is much larger than this. The converter is in DCM. If converter is in CCM, then 12, uh, no, 16. 16 is in voltage, and D is this one. Then this is a 4 volt, OK? But in the DCM, and with the same duty ratio, our voltage is larger than this one. Because when in DCM, this voltage gain is, should be larger than this. Okay? So our voltage is this 5 something. Right? And we use the previous formula. And I show, what I'm showing is accuracy of that analysis. D1 is this one, 0.47. So this period of time, this is on time period. So this must be one quarter, and this must be 0.47, and 
and this colon absent period, inductor colon absent period is 1 minus sum of two numbers. What is times TS. Okay? Just forget about TS. So everything is okay. And the maximum, this is output voltage here, and the maximum of inductor current is this one, which is very similar or exactly the same as this prediction. And we have a ripple component. We always have a ripple component because of this capacitance. So we have capacitance and AC current is passing through this. And this ripple component is usually larger than the CCM case because you are thinking about the AC component of this, okay? This variation of inductor current is larger than case of the CCM because of this current absent period, this becomes larger. So CCM has some larger ripple component and the voltage swing will be, no, no, this current swing will be larger, okay? All right, so this is the final page. No, no, no. This is a summary of previous analysis. BCM gain is proportional to the load current, as I claimed, okay? As we used to understand the DCM waveforms of the inductor current, so R becomes larger, then VO becomes larger, okay? This is also important one. So DCM gain needs larger than CCM gain for the same duty ratio. I have shown that here. If this D is the same, D remains the same. If converter is in CCM, this volt, but if converter is DCM, this voltage is increased like that. Okay? So this condition holds for the most practical cases. I'm not claiming this. This is a mathematical equation like that. It's, it's not the mathematical thing. Okay? For the conventional or usual value of this, 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 then this is true. Okay? For the 99% like that. Right? So this is not mathematical claim. This is the engineering claim. Right? So when converter goes in the from CCM to DCM, our voltage is increasing if duty ratio remains the same, right? Usually this our voltage will be regulated. It should stay at fixed value. For that, we use the feedback control. We'll discuss that very soon, right? Suppose that you are regulating our voltage at fixed volt, like four volt in CCM, right? In CCM, okay? Duty ratio remains same, input voltage remains the same, but you increase the R, and the converter is jumping from the CCM and the DCM, then our voltage will be larger than previous one, right? <laughs> that means the regulation phase is not the case. The feedback mechanism, they, the mechanism reduce duty ratio to value the output voltage same as the previous case, okay? So CCM, DCM jump, they mostly of course by change of the load current. So if the load current is decreased or load distance is suddenly increased, then converter will jump from the CCM to DCM, then the feedback loop must decrease the duty ratio to make output constant. You understand this? Right? Okay. That is important observation. All right. So we'll be talking about those Closed control very soon. This is the last page before talking about that. Okay. Another condition. As I said, if you change the duty ratio, then the operational mode will change from CCM to DCM or from DCM to CCM. The reason for that is this is a condition for the DCM. This is obvious. This is also obvious. This is also obvious. This, this side, this left-hand side is duty ratio. This is some number, and we consider this as a duty ratio, right? 
because this is a simple number, again, this is a simple number, then we, then we call it D critical, right? For this case, suppose L and R are fixed and everything fixed except D, right? Then this is the D critical. Where D is smaller than D critical, then the situation is like this, and then converter is in DCM, right? Because we start from here. This is a DCM condition. This is the DCM condition, and the D critical is given by this. Okay. This is the curve. This is the UV ratio. Okay. And this is the voltage gain. If converter remains the CCM all the time, then this slope is just what D one or D. This is just the linear relationship of the conventional CCM operation, straight line with the slope of one. Okay. Then, but before this converter is in DCM operation, okay. This assume this is the plot of that complicated equation. I don't know. This is a very complicated equation. All right. Suppose you plot this for the given values or, or the assuming the other, other parameters are given. So this is the DCM curve. Okay. If you increase D from the, G, from the zero to some value, then at below this value of the D, converter is DCM and it follows this DCM gain formula. And with this D critical, converter is on the boundary of CCM and DCM. If you further increase the duty ratio, converter is in CCM, right? So when you plot the, this curve T and this curve, voltage and curve, you should think about this, right? Don't assume this converter is always in CCM. That is the very, very primitive and naive conception, idea, that might be not true, okay? But there is a condition, you make this converter always in CCM regardless, regardless of the value of this D. What is that? This is D critical, and this, this inequality means you have this kind of curve. D critical must be a positive number, okay? Any number larger than zero, right? If this is negative number, the positive number satisfying this equation is not existing. That means converter never goes in, into the DCM, regardless of value of the D, right? Namely, this condition negate, avoid, okay? Negate the presence of this critical D. It says it is impossible to find this non, this positive value. So this, there is no D critical. Means D critical is somewhere here, which is imaginary. Then converter remains always in the CCM, regardless of the value of D, right? This is also important, all right? And finally, most important thing is, maybe you consider the CCM is good and the DCM is bad, okay? That is not true, okay? System is not a bad guy. No, no, no. DCM is not a bad guy and the CCM is not a good guy. It depends on the situation. And even though you designed your converter for CCM, it goes DCM when the line load mode operation or protective mode operation. So you, 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 use, you should consider CCM and DCM in determining the power stage rating, power stage component rating, MOSFET switches. That is one thing. And the more important thing is DCM operational principle is slightly different or somewhat different from the CCM case and the power stage waveforms are different and more importantly open loop power stage dynamics are different and most importantly the closed loop performance of converter is quite different depending on the operational mode. mode okay? So maybe you, you, you should consider CCM and DCM all together when you are designing controller and the power stage all together. Okay? 
will address those issues later one by one as we progress this study about this. All right, so this is the end of topic one, and I'm happy. We eventually get out of this topic number one, and topic number two, we are starting talking about the control aspect of this PWM converter. So, you know, the, this term, terminology, closed loop. This means closed loop controlled buck converter. Okay. This topic has two sub categories closed loop control and DC regulation. And the second one is voltage feedback circuit and the transient response of this closed loop controlled buck converter. Okay, first. Closed loop control and DC regulation. This is the schematic diagram of a converter with feedback controller. Okay, so this is the power stage. Let's assume the CCM and the data we we consider the DCM separately. Now, converter is DCM. Then our voltage is DVS. Okay, and we want this our voltage same as the reference voltage. Right. Some of my undergrad students in the past, they asked, you have DC, same band of DC. Why, why you are you worrying about this, concerning about all this? Okay. The answer is, this is a very small battery type, DC power supply, DC source. And this guy can deliver 2M current, but large current is entirely different story. Okay. So maybe probably you will use Zener diode for the voltage source here, something like that. Okay. Zener diode cannot deliver 2 amp amps of current, so it's entirely different story. And to regulate this at the fixed voltage, this is a closed loop operation. So we have feedback controller, and our goal is to maintain. This our voltage at this const constant value given by this, regardless of some changes, this R and this Vs, okay? Usually the input voltage is given by some range, okay? And this is also given by some range, okay? When this one, they, this one changes in the CCM, it doesn't matter. Our voltage remains the same because our voltage is determined only determined by D and Vs. But if converter can jump into DCM by changing this, then equation will be different. Even though that circumstance, you want to regulate this, that is called DC regulation. So closure control is required. We have some functional connection between output of this converter and this duty ratio, OK? This is a PW converter. There is only one controllable variable there. There is the duty ratio. Other than that, everything is fixed. There is only one means of controlling this converter. Duty, the, 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 the D, this is a duty ratio, right? So usually this regulation refers to closed control to regulate our voltage at a fixed DC voltage in the periodic steady state operation, not during the transient period, and at the presence of input variation, mode variation, and operational mode change. Variation changes, CCM or DCM, many things can happen. And inspired that, we want to regulate, keep this our voltage constant at DC in steady state, not transient period, steady state only. This is called the DC, DC regulation. There are two kinds of DC regu regulation they are talking about. One is line regulation. This means keeping output voltage constant by this feedback when input varies. Line means this input line. And load variation means keeping output voltage constant at the presence of load variation, R variation, is two are called as DC regulation. And the PWM technique is used for this DC regulation. So 
sometimes you want to change some two ratio. If input voltage is increased, you need to decrease this to maintain this constant. Then the controller decreases this control voltage V con, this control voltage, then duty ratio becomes smaller than previous one, like this. And this switch drive signal is narrower. Pulse width is changed, modulate. That is called PWM. So this is PWM converter. All right? And feedback controller consists of two functional block. One is a PWM block, and the other one is, the other one is voltage feedback circuit combined with this reference voltage. Okay? So we'll be discussing one by one, and we'll discuss the entire operation, and so on. Okay? Okay. We are doing good in time. Pulse width modulation scheme. So PWM is performed this PWM block, and it receives this VCON control voltage from the voltage feedback circuit, and it also uses this VDAM is generated inside of this feedback controller. Okay? When you are talking about PWM IC, you are talking about this and this and everything except this one. It contains OPM, but you need add something to have the proper design of feedback compensation, right? So first, this pulse width modulation is performed by this, this is a PWM block, you know the structure of this. I explained the internal, some internal circuit of this using PSIM, it RS flip prop plus this comparator and some, some pulse clock is required. So I draw clock here. This clock is also internally generated inside of this PWM block. So clock is doing like this. So this is a leading H of clock. Okay, this is clock. When clock becomes high, okay, at the leading H, this one uh, generate VK1, it becomes one, okay? And the ramp, this is the ramp waveform, start ramping up at this instant. And it, it goes down the instant at which this control voltage and the V ramp intersect each other. At that moment, this goes down and it repeats this periodic operation. This is the basic functional diagram of PWM. Okay? This is called pulse width modulation. Modulation means changing something. Okay? Now assume this is increased V con, is increased the V con prime, then this signal will be issued here with this blue curve, and this part is modulate, and the modulate part is trailing edge. Okay? So there are many PWM scheme. This one is called constant frequency because this ramp frequency is fixed, so constant frequency, and the part changing is, is not this leading edge, but this trailing edge. So this is called constant frequency, trailing edge modulation. There are many, many other schemes. You can change this, this part. That is called the leading edge modulation. And you can change the both of this and this part, dual edge modulation. Or you fix this, and you just change the frequency. Then effectively, duty ratio is changed. That is variable frequency control. There are so many schemes. Okay, you are using this, this so to swave. Some guy they use this triangular wave pumps, that's fine. Okay. Maybe something else inverted this function can be used for some case. There are many cases, but this one is considered as the standard. So we'll be using this for the remaining part of this lecture. Okay? So we'll be talking about the constant frequency trailing edge modulation. And somehow Maybe most of you already know this, but somehow I'd like 
summarize the sum of operational amplifier feature because we will be using operational amplifier and maybe some student they don't have enough knowledge for this I don't know but I, I prepared this okay ideal operational amplifier is shown here so ideal operational is some imaginary device conceptual device fixtures device it's not existing in the world there is no ideal device but why we are learning ideal device all the time ideal diode ideal transformer and ideal opamp ideal something many things so particularly for this ideal opamp everybody start learning opamp from the ideal opamp why we are doing that okay one is it helps it assists us to understand the nature, behavior of real OPM, practical OPM. That's one thing. Another one is most cases you assume your practical OPM is ideal. Then you finish design and you do some analysis using the concept of ideal OPM. That is okay for the most cases. Some cases, maybe some third cases, you need to have some detailed analysis. That's other story. Okay. For the most case, 95% of your application, this ideal OPM is enough, more than enough. Okay. So this is the uh, ideal OPM, and this can be practical OPM. Anyway, this is inverting terminal, and this is the non-inverting terminal, out terminal. It has some internal out impedance or out resistance. Okay, and the there is term this gain of this OPM is called differential gain or open loop gain. Why is that? This OPM is usually always used applied as the closed loop form with negative feedback. Okay, this 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 OPM is unstable device. This gain is very large. So this voltage is slightly larger than this one. Our voltage becomes infinity, ideally. But in practically, we have this bias voltage. So this is VCC. So this is negative VEE, for example. Then maximum value is here. You know, then output will be saturated. And or output will be saturated, this negative value. Saturation means what? It's not working. The loop is broken. Okay. Saturation means still there is some functional connection, but feedback function is gone. That means loop is open. Okay. Feedback scheme mechanism is broken. There is disaster. All right. So this is an unstable device. Okay. So to make use of this, we use some feature. Okay. Some negative feedback feature. Okay, so because of that, this AB itself is open loop gain or differential gain. Okay, this inverting terminal and this non inverting terminal. Some student, this inverting terminal, if there is some voltage, it becomes negative. That is not true, mostly. Most likely, that is not true. The meaning of this negative terminal is if this is increased, then this output will be decreased, okay? Or output is decreased, no, input is decreased, output is increased, something like that. So direction of this movement is opposite. There is meaning of this negative sign. This is the term inverting, and the non-inverting terminal is, is opposite of that, okay? All right. So ideal characteristic, this Ri is infinite, Ri is distance seen by this input port is infinite then means this i1 and i2 is zero okay but for the practical case this was not infinite but it is very large maybe 10 to 6 or 10 to 8 depends on device bjt or mosfet they have different range of this input resistance which can be considered almost infinite Okay, and the RO, RO is zero, then makes the, this R voltage appearing here as the dependent voltage source is always this zero, then 
the regardless of detailed characteristic of this load, that voltage is directly appear here. There is no, no loading effect. If this is some final number, if this changes, then our voltage will be changed. That does not happen. Okay? To make that, to guarantee that kind of feature, RO is assumed zero, but in practical, OPM RO is something like this. Okay? And for the ideal OPM, AV is infinite. For the all frequency, okay? it does not depend on the, if this is the sinusoidal wave, it does not depend on the frequency of such sinusoidal waveform. For all the sinusoidal waveforms, regardless of its frequency, this game is infinity, but practical o OPM is far different, far less than that. So typical operation, the most common one is BUA714. Okay. It was developed by the Fairchild, name of the uh, semiconductor company, maybe 50 years ago, and still many people are using that. That circuit is very simple, but the performance is very good, very cheap. Okay. If you go to the IC design house, you get job there, and probably the first circuit you are asked to analyze or to be duplicate through your design will be this OPM, BUA714. Okay? Very simple and not simple, but it contains a lot of techniques coming from the electronics circuit. So that is a very, very successful device. There's the lifespan of that device is more than 50 years, okay? It's younger than me, but fairly old, okay? So for that case, this the gain characteristic is something like this, okay? This value is very large, 140 dB, something like that, and it decays linearly like this. Slope is 20 dB per decade, Okay, why is that? It has no pass filter characteristic. Why we are, this is intentionally designed in that manner. Otherwise, in the practical circuit, there are so many parasitic elements, and because of that, this, this predictable characteristic is impossible to obtain. Maybe something will occur here, occur here, you cannot predict. So you add some capacitor inside of that, and this pole, low frequency pole, it comes relatively low frequency. So maybe it is uh, uh, something 50 hertz at very low frequency. There is a dominant, dominant pole here. So this is first order characteristics. So why using this? Okay. And it has this predictable designed characteristics. And suppose at this frequency, Maybe this becomes 10 to 3, and this frequency is some frequency. Then below this frequency, this device works as very similar to the ideal object. Okay? So if, if you are in this region, this frequency is relatively high, megahertz, then you, you may assume this is ideal object. Okay? There are some minor difference, okay? but if you use some, some extra component, you cannot tell the difference. Okay, so this is one story. I'd like to talk about this. Okay. I taught many courses, many, many courses in this university. The best subject I like the most is electronics two. This one. This one. This one has all of the story, electronics two, okay? Electro, elect, electronics one is child display, very easy, but electronics two requires some knowledge about the frequency response and the feedback theory, okay? Something like that. And the frequency analysis, very interesting. My favorite <laughs> course was the electronics one and two, not power electronics. Okay? 
because people, students, they think electronics are important, power electronics are less important, something like that. Right? So another concept is this one, virtual shoot and virtual ground. Maybe most of you already familiar with this, but let me, let me briefly go through this, okay? As I said, the OPM is you always use this structure, okay? This our voltage is given by this, but there is a feedback from the output to this inverting terminal. It's kind of negative feedback. Why is that? This is required to stabilize this unstable device. As I said, OPM is unstable device. OPM is sitting on this edge. It can go this direction, go direction, something like that. All right? With feedback, it, it is moved to this stable area. Okay? So there is one application using this OPM in this status. What is that? There's a comparator. Okay? Comparator use OP OPM itself. Without anything, then it works as a comparator if something touches the go direction, like that. Okay? So, so I'm not talking about the comparator. Comparator is something else. But for the other applications, you always have this kind of feedback circuit. This is also some, some, some type of negative feedback, all right? So we have this structure, and our voltage is this one. For the proper operation of the converter, this output voltage is some final number between this bias voltage, positive one, negative one, around the zero, probably, can be zero, right? Then some number. Then this is finite, this is finite. So we convert this equation, so this equation, if A, B is very large, this is very large, this is finite, then this voltage difference is very, very small, okay? If A, e, A B is infinite, and this, this, this difference becomes zero, right? For the ideal OPM, this, this port of two voltage of potential of this inverting and the non-inverting terminal is identical. Or very small, extremely small, okay? It really doesn't matter if it, that is the one milli M, one millivolt is consumed, assumed as a zero, okay? All right, so this is called virtual shot. So these two terminals are shorted, means no current is passing through. There is no current pass, but they have the same potential. That is called virtual shot. So for the older applications, with this type of negative feedback, virtual shot always appears here, okay? Always they, they have the same potential or very similar potential, which is considered to be same, okay? One exception is comparator. Comparator is something else, okay? And this one terminal is grounded. This non-inverting terminal is grounded. This is real ground, physical ground, and potential is zero, but they are virtually shorted, and this is considered as a ground. They, because they have the same potential, but no current is passing through this. So this is called virtual ground or virtual shot. And so this concept of virtual ground, virtual shot, and virtual ground, and the real ground is extremely important, okay? Then the, the other non-ideal catalyst can be ignored, okay? If you, you are designing this OPM, you should consider that. But for the application engineer, you can assume this is everything is ideal. Okay, so one example here is, this is called the inverting amplifier. So all the practical circuit, other than the comparator, output is connected through this element and the feedback from the output to this terminal. If this is connected to this, then some problem. That becomes a positive feedback, and it will oscillate. So this, this should be always connected to this in, inverting terminal. And this is what? This is ground. This is virtual ground. So potential is zero. Then you have this, this node equation. Okay? This is the input. This is the output. And from this location, this incoming current is this voltage divided by zero, oh no, this voltage minus zero, divided by this, that current is the same as this outgoing current, and from that, you, you, you derive this equation, 
this is inverting amplifier. And another configuration is this one. This non-inverting amplifier. So feedback is again here. And the input signal is applied here, plus terminal. So there is no minus sign here. Okay. If it's applied here, you have minus sign here. Okay. That, but that is not the real meaning of this negative sign. Negative sign means if this is increased, this is decreased, something like that. All right? So, and this, is, this, this port is virtual short, and you put equation here because this is a Vx, you have this equation, and based on this, the voltage gain is this, and this is always larger than one, non inverting amplifier. One special case, and very important case is, you directly connect this, then you may consider this is zero, or this is infinity, either case this is gone, then gain is one. So, or simply this is shorted, then that becomes our voltage. Okay, this unit gain buffer. Why using this? The input impedance of this device is infinity, ideally, and output distance of this, this is zero, ideally. So this has very good characteristics. There is no loading effect for this kind of configuration. So we are using this all the time because this has excellent characteristic of this, even though the voltage gain is just one, it has this. Otherwise, you have severe loading effect. And the, if you connect many stages together, overall voltage gain will be suffered a lot. Okay? With this, you don't have to worry about that. Right. Okay. That's enough for the ideal OPM. So we use ideal OPM here. Okay. This is PWM block. We went through this, and this is a voltage feedback circuit structure here. Right. So and we have this V reference, a fixed voltage, and in this situation, assume this in voltage is this one. But for some reason, this voltage is increased from the desired value by some reason. I don't know. You don't know. Okay? You don't have to know. Okay? So this is increased. Then it goes this direction. Then this will go down. Okay? The V cone will be reduced. Then means V cone will be reduced. Then this width of the switch drive signal will be shortened, reduced, like this. Okay, so this D is reduced. Then VO, our voltage here, is reduced. Okay, there is a mechanism. It brings it start here. The our voltage is was larger than our goal. Through this one one cycle of operation. This will be deduced, okay? Some, some value, all right? So I don't know how much it will be deduced, okay? So I have written, written down here, V will increase, and this one decrease, duty ratio decrease, and output decrease. It goes the, the right direction, but it deduces the error, but we want to have the zero error. This is not enough for that. The error will be deduced, but this does not guarantee error will be reduced to zero. Okay? So we need something else. Another requirement for that, there is a condition for the DC regulation it is shown here. Okay? So DC regulation is what? We want to have output voltage fixed at DC value. It may go some, some fluctuation, transient, during the transient period. But in periodic steady state, you should reach the desired value, finite value. That is called the regulation. For that, we have some requirement for this, nature of this and this. Okay? This one is very easy. Okay. Again, set up this node equation at this point. Okay? Then this is the incoming current, VO minus virtual short, virtual ground, no, no, virtual short, not ground, okay? Free, ref, free reference, and G1 is incoming current, as the same as the outgoing current, okay? Because I here 
as zero or very small can be considered as zero practically. Okay. Then we have this equation, and uh, I rearranged this equation in this form, the same equation. Okay. Then it's easier to see, right? Suppose this value is infinity, and this value is finite, right? For the proper operation of this converter, this number is finite, and the output of this control voltage should be some number between this upper limit and the lower limit, which is finite voltage. Then this number should be zero. Okay? Otherwise, this, this equation becomes inconstant. Inconsistent. So some number, when multiplied with infinity, becomes some or any finite number is zero. Okay? Right? Okay. The, and we only consider magnitude of this at DC. Why is that? In general, this S is complex frequency, sigma plus J omega. But we are, when we are, we are talking about the sinusoidal waveform, constant magnitude, this is, in general, this is this kind of waveforms. But the input is with some constant amplitude. Then this is zero. Okay? Then we only have J omega, all right? We want to have the DC regulation in the steady state. What is the steady state? In the steady state, all the AC variables, they die out. And only DC component is there. Right? So circuit, eventually responding only DC component, and the response to the AC component dies out. Okay? For the stable system, so uh, we are talking about stable system, right? of course. Right? That means we need to consider is magnitude at DC. This is DC frequency. Omega is zero. Sinusoidal waveform with zero frequency is DC. So this, this is true, but you don't have to this infinity and this infinity. Only one of them is infinity. Right? If both of them infinity becomes some finite number. Okay? So this is infinity and this G1 is not infinity, then this is zero. Then this becomes, no, this is infinity, this becomes zero, okay? Then means this is zero, then output should be this one in the state state. Regardless of any changes, operational mode change, any changes, this is guaranteed. By selecting this, by meeting this condition, right? This is one, one, Derivation for the DC regulation condition for your interest or for your phone. Another derivation is shown here. Okay. Previously, we used KCL at this point, but we are, we are using the input to non-inverting terminal. So when you are considering this, this is what? Linear circuit. So superposition can be applied. So this is grounded. Okay. This is grounded and it is connected like this. That is what? That is non inverting amplifier. This is a gain of the non inverting amplifier. And the other one is inverting amplifier. Some of them is output of this. Okay. This is the general expression for this. And magnitude of at, D, at DC is this one. Assume this is infinity. This value is infinity. Then inverse of this is zero. Right? So this is, if this is infinity, this is inverse of that is zero. Then it gone, and this becomes V reference minus VO. Then it, this control voltage. If this satisfied, then we can is they cancel out. Oh, no, no. This zero, okay. Oh, what I <laughs> this must be zero, right? The, uh, something is missing here.
infinity times square. Square should be the zero. This is a square. Square, square, square. Something is missing. This is we call square, square. Something is missing. This condition, okay? So this infinity, then this not square. Triangle should be zero. This is triangle, okay? That means VO should be same as V reference in the steady state. Okay, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm missing something, okay? But you can catch the idea, right? The same conclusion, regardless of the way of analyzing this, okay? So, meeting this requirement, let me finish up this page. You have, I have shown two examples of this. One is this simple integrator. Okay? It's called the Miller integrator. I don't know. The Miller is the name of the guy. I don't know. Maybe. Also, this is the name of the beer, American beer. This Miller integrator. And with this, we have this. Okay? This is the integrator gain. And this one, this one is infinity because S is coming in the denominator, and this one is one, then we have this ratio. So it satisfies the requirement for the DC regulation. But this is the worst choice. Later on, you will be no why. Okay? You need some some many of class lectures to understand this. Okay? But this is the worst choice for the per converter who are any converter or any system, and the optimum structure of this for the bulk converter is this one. Okay, this is called the three pole two zero circuit. If you drive this this transfer function, the typical way of doing this is G two. Drive this, drive this, find the ratio of the this, and you factorize that. Then you can come up with this, 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 this. Right? That is the brute force method. That method can be done for anybody, even middle school school, middle school student. They can do this. Right? This is the pain in the net, very painful and very tedious. But from this circuit structure, you can write down immediately this, 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 this. But just seeing this structure and this, this, com this combination of this, this is directly written down without any error. If you starting drive this, you're pretty sure you will make some, some stupid mistake in the middle and go back to the end, go to the end and come back to the beginning, so on. Okay? I'll explain this the next lecture, which is very simple, but very useful. Okay? Because of the some, some, some structure, and the nature of poles and the zeros of the linear network that can be done very easily, right? Okay, that's it for today. And we don't have a class next Tuesday. Next Tuesday is the holiday in Korea. Okay, so we have next class in Thursday. Okay, thank you. Have a good holiday.